For this block I'm going to try a couple of uh, new different things. So to begin with, um, I've printed out my design, not on regular bond paper, but on tracing paper. Um, I buy this here locally, and so in Spanish actually it's translated as parchment paper. But it isn't the type of paper that you use for baking, it's a, it's a parchment paper that you can put through your printer. Okay, and so I've printed my design on that tracing paper. And the reason why is because this allows me to see through the paper really easily. So, um, in this case it doesn't really matter if it's on the right or reverse side of the design. I am still using it on my light box to trace my registration marks. And so, I don't know if you can see them, it's, they're very light, but they're right here. I've got some registration marks. And then, as I applique my different pieces, I will also use this to like double check the placement. So, for example, if I've applique this one down, then I can put my paper on C and see if it isn't in the right place, then I can move it and just make sure that it's in the correct place before I start stitching it down. So that is how I will use my design from the right side up. And then, of course, I will reverse it to trace my applique shapes. And in this case, what I'm going to use is the, this aplastic um, paper, which is a, it's a web. It's a fusible web. And uh, you'll remember that I discussed this in the first, the, the video with the first block. Why I like this is because it has, um, a, it, it's a double stick. So you can trace it out, press it onto the back side of your fabric, and then when you peel the, the paper off, it's sticky so that you can move it if you need until you find the correct placement. But in this case, I'm going to use it a little bit differently. Um, I've cut out several of my pieces. And what I'm going to do is show you, let me see, let me get a dark background here for you. Okay, so this is like piece number one. This is the base, the pedestal of the sink. And uh, remember that um, in pieces that are going to go under others to always leave a little bit extra. And I always mark these with an arrow so that I remember that this will be tucked under another piece. Okay. And I'm going to use my Appliquick tools for this. Okay, so um, the other thing that I'm going to do is on shapes like this in corners, I don't want to cut through completely to the edge, but I'm going to reduce the bulk in the corners by just snipping off a little bit on each corner. Okay. And then um, if you've seen this technique before, you know that you use just interfacing for this, not this web, um, and then you apply glue. Usually what you do is, if this is interfacing, you apply glue to the, to the edge, and you use your tools to bring the edge up and, and paste it, I mean, glue it down. What I'm going to do with, in this case is, by using the Aplistic product, I'm going to use the glue from the product to hold the, the edges down. And I found that even on very slight curves, it's best to clip them. It makes it just easier to fold the edges down. But once again, not going through to the edge of the, of the design, of the, the line. Okay. I still have my paper on. And now I'm going to take the, remove the paper, and this is sticky, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down, and just using my tools, I'm just going to gently turn the edges under. and use the sticky side to hold 
that seam allowance down. I'm using a very narrow seam allowance, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. Okay. And then just using the sticky side of the apple stick to hold that seam allowance down. You can hear my puppy walking around me. Okay. And the same with the other side until we finish folding all of the edges down. And if we get a little thing like this, you just lift it up again. Go and bring it down. And uh, this is the advantage of when you're working with glue, sometimes it dries very quickly. And so I found that this actually was a pretty neat way of doing it because I don't worry about the glue drying. And um, it's one less step, I guess, in the process. And when I'm finished, I still have the sticky part of the, of the web here, so I can actually go ahead and place that on my fabric and start stitching. Okay. Uh, if I want to prepare all my pieces, of course, the problem with this would be that you'd be stuck with a whole bunch of pieces sitting around with the sticky side open, but what you can do is just go ahead and put your paper back on until you're ready to applique. Okay, and so that way protect it. So uh, the other thing that I would do also is I'm going to applique this piece by piece. I'm not going to lay them all down and then start stitching. I think I'd rather just go piece by piece. Um, working through the numbering on the pattern. So let's go do that. I'm ready to start stitching my applique pieces down. I am using a matching thread color, the bobbin, and I'm using invisible thread on top. Um, and my, I'm using my open toe foot, my applique foot, so I can see where I'm going. And the stitch that I'm using on my machine is called an applique stitch. Basically what it does, it's, uh, it's used for applique when the seams are turned under and for bindings. So what it does, it takes like three stitches and then a little bite into the left or the right depending on where your needle is positioned. And um, so, uh, in, co in comparison to like a blanket stitch, which does like every stitch gets covered, it's not necessary here because of the turned under edge. So all you want to do really is secure the piece down. Okay. So let's start. If you can see that stitch on the back. Okay, so I'm going to continue with the next piece. 
I'm ready to attach the second piece and you'll recall one of the reasons why I like this product is because when I um, put it in place if it isn't quite correct I can always lift it up and move it and then again the reason why I like working with this tracing paper is because this is another way to verify that my piece is in place before I start stitching it down. On this narrow piece, by the time I turned uh, the seam allowances over, they covered the whole back side, leaving none of the sticky glue exposed. So in this case, I have applied a little bit of fabric glue so that I can put it in place on my block and not have it move while I stitch it down. And once again, use my sheet to double check that. Okay, looks good. And I can start stitching that down. Following the numbering on, the, um, on this pattern, after applicating the sink, we have all these little pieces sitting on top of the sink. And um, I do indicate on the pattern that some of these pieces are so, so small that you might just want to consider applicating them. I mean, excuse me, embroidering them. Um, I've decided to go ahead and applicate them. But in this case, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to use a really tiny zigzag stitch. And obviously, these are too small to use the method that I was using for these larger pieces by turning the seam allowances under. So here I'm just cutting them and just doing the typical um, uh, fusible, you know, web uh, method. Now, for pieces like this, what I decided to do too was to first stitch the two fabrics together and cut this out as only one piece so like this so that um, it would be easier to applique to make a larger piece so for example this one here and then these on the shelf also it just seemed easier to join the two pieces and applique them as one piece then this one and then this one too. Okay. If you feel that these pieces are still too small for you to handle, I mean, I, I think that you just have to go very carefully, very slowly when applicating. And in this case, instead of using a blanket stitch, I would really recommend that you just use a very small zigzag stitch. That will work a lot better. And, you know, once again, using the invisible thread, um, it, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you just go slow, it will work out really well. Then the things that I do, I have chosen to embroider because they're so tiny, are things like the toothbrushes and here the shelves, the, these pieces on the shelves. And so I've decided to do that first before I continue appliquing um, the, the pieces here on top of the sink. So here, I've um, embroidered the toothbrushes and then these little pieces on the shelves. Everything else I will continue to applique. So I'm going to continue with these very small pieces first 
and I'm just going to go ahead and follow the order given in the pattern. So, doing the finishing the sink uh, on the sink, there's this little piece here at the end of the spout that I will also um, embroider after appliquing this piece, and then continue in the order given. So let's continue. Here is my finished block. So to recap, on the larger pieces, I used the apple stick web um, and folded the seams under. This method doesn't really work that well for small pieces, although I did do some like this one. I did do this vase, but for the other smaller ones, I realized it just doing the usual um, fusible web method work better. On large pieces, definitely this is an alternative. And then on the pattern, there's several places where I indicate that you probably would want to embroider. In the end, I did use the fusible web for these little knobs. So what I did embroider was the end of the spouts and I did use a French knot here on the knobs and I also embroidered the toothbrushes which I think are the cutest part of this block. All in all this was a really fun block to do and um, you obviously can use any method that you like. I just like to experiment with something new and if you find that this is something interesting then you might try it too. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you.